Welcome back to Pop-Up Ologies. If this is your first time with us, in each video installation we'll be discussing a different ology, meaning the study of something. We'll talk a little bit about what these scientists do, and learn a little bit about their particular fields of interest too. This week's subject has been a hot topic in the news lately, and we just couldn't resist. So settle in and let's learn a little bit more about entomology. So what does an entomologist study exactly? An entomologist is a person who specifically focuses on the scientific study of insects, and most will focus on one type in particular. This is probably for the best, because there are well over a million to choose from. In fact, over half of all named species on Earth are insects. Just to name a few, an entomologist who focuses on bees is called an apiologist, one who studies beetles is called a coleopterist, and one who studies butterflies is known as a lepidopterist. An entomologist studies the classification, life cycle, and habits of insects. They might also work with a team of other scientists, developing pest-resistant crops with plant geneticists, or working with medical researchers to develop medicines that combat insect-borne diseases. So what makes an insect an insect? Let's get some terminology out of the way first. So what is an insect? It's not just any cutie crawly. For example, what about millipedes? They actually belong to the class Diplopoda. With a mini-segmented body and way more than six legs, they aren't actually insects at all. Spiders? Nope, those are arachnids. And arthropods, but not insects. What about roly-polies? Well, those guys are isopods, and they're actually more closely related to a lobster than an ant. Insects are, technically speaking, all the critters that belong to the order Insecta. Every species in the order Insecta is an arthropod, with a chitinous exoskeleton, a three-part body, head, thorax, and abdomen, three pairs of jointed legs making six in total, compound eyes, and one pair of antenna. But it's a lot faster to just call them insects. So, ladybugs? Yep, those guys are definitely insects. And so are beetles, and bees, and crickets, and dragonflies, and the list goes on and on. Fun fact, did you know that dragonflies are actually ancient insects, older than the dinosaurs, and used to have wingspans over two feet wide? I do not think that would fit in my bug net. But let's get down to business here. What is up with all these cicadas? In our region of Ohio, every summer has its cicadas. In southwestern Ohio, you might stumble upon a variety of species in any given year, such as the walker cicada, southern grass cicada, or swamp cicada. Of course, you're most likely to stumble upon 2021's periodic superstar, the Magis cicada. Magis cicada are periodic, meaning they emerge in cycles lasting either 13 or 17 years long. Of course, every year has its stragglers, and while Brood 10 is more common in our area, southwestern Ohio also sees overlap from Brood 14, which is on a totally different schedule. Regardless of the year, Magis cicada species can be identified by their dark body, orange wings, and bright red eyes. This year's brood may have waited underground for 17 years, but will only stick around for another four to eight weeks, depending on the weather and other environmental conditions. In the meantime, our local birds, rodents, reptiles, fish, and arachnids will enjoy a feast until they're too full to eat another bite. These periodic emergencies are actually a clever survival strategy. There are so many cicadas that they are easily able to ensure their survival for the next generation even with all the other species that consider them a tasty snack. Not only that, but 17 years is a long time to wait for a meal. Nothing can adapt to survive solely off of them. Soon the female cicadas will begin to lay their eggs, between 200 and 600 each, into tiny holes they cut into branches and twigs. Soon after, the eggs will hatch, and nymphs smaller than a grain of rice will eventually drop to the ground, seeking safety in the soil and their favorite food source, sap-rich tree roots, where they will remain feeding until their turn to emerge comes. I wonder what our parks will look like the next time they get to see them. These fascinating insects may not be with us long, but each emergence reminds us to look closer at the insect world around us. Make sure you get out into your local parks and see these magic cicadas for yourselves, and maybe identify some other insects too. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time for Pop-Up Ologies.